How often is it that you get two trimmers in the same day, 2024s, one has the new color which is dark and bronze and the other one has a new color which is the glacier. Perfect setup. I'm here at Larry H. Miller, Super Ford in Salt Lake City and this truck's a Lariat with the diesel. This is an XLT with a gas engine. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about should you get the gas or diesel. I've done a lot of videos but this is for the trimmer so we're going to call this gas versus diesel trimmer edition let's get started for the most part most guys buying these super duty trimmers are probably not going to take them off road at least not to the extreme hardcore right but there are some guys that will and whether you pick gas or diesel that might be a big deciding factor for you now let's kind of go through really quickly what you get with the trimmer package up first you guys can probably tell you have a shorter valance which personally makes these trucks look so much nicer so you're gonna get better ground clearance you're gonna get worse fuel economy and that's okay because it's an off-road truck and that's what you expect you also get a meteor tire 18 inch wheel standard this setup here is a goodyear wrangler dirt track 285 75 18 or 34.8 inches tall 11.2 inches wide 4080 pounds of capacity when you get the trimmer also you get if I can show it to you you get the trimmer tune shock so these are off-road shocks and you get an LSD front axle Now, unless I pulled up a non-trimmer Super Duty, you would be able to notice that these trucks have a two inch lift up front, not the rear. However, the tires are gonna give you a little bit of lift because they're a little bit taller. They're both one ton, so you're not gonna see anything different with the leaf packs. And down below, you guys will see that they have tuned trimmer shocks in the rear. Now, this is the gas truck here. That axle ratio is gonna be a 430, and it's gonna have a locker in the rear. As far as the diesel goes, it's going to have a 355, it's going to have that locker as well. Both trucks have a full-size spare tire, which is good for the trails if you do bust a tire. You don't want a little donut back there, right? And as far as the running boards go, you have these high clearance steps here, which pretty much come standard with these trucks. Now really quickly, the Lariat interior is the way to go for sure leather seats power driver and passenger power steering column power for your tow mode for your mirrors to extend them and to fold them in you have the large screens here and there heated and ventilated seats with heated steering wheel as far as the trimmer package goes you have this trail control so you can pretty much like have cruise control for the trail and you have trail turn assist there is a rock crawl drive mode when you swipe it to the right there. Let's go ahead and check out the XLT. Now, believe it or not, this XLT does have some niceties. So it does have a power seat. It does have power front and rear and it will slide. However, your seat recline is mainly operated. Power lumbar support right there. And you have power windows, power door locks as you would expect. And you can power fold them and extend them for tow mode with power and center console heated seats even though they are cloth and i didn't mention but they both are going to have the auxiliary switches standard with the trimmer package same things that you saw on the lariat and this one does have the larger screens too 360 camera view comes a part of this package trail turn assist let's talk about the gas engine first if you know that you're gonna be going off-road for hours at a time, crawling at low speeds, I would 100% go gas engine. These diesels are very, very fragile in my opinion when you're crawling at low speeds and not really getting these trucks under load. So, if you, unless you're towing a lot of trailer, I would definitely go gas engine. And when I show you guys the towing capacity, you might kind of be swayed to just go gas engine because of that. But 430 horsepower, comes on around 5,500 RPMs and 485 pound-feet of torque comes on around 4,000. 
Uh, the cylinder heads are aluminum, cast iron block. This is a push rod V8 and it's port fuel injected. So there's no cylinder deactivation like the Rams. Also, you have that 430 rear, which even at higher elevations, it will always keep you in the broadband a lot better. The 10 speed transmission, which is a 10R140, is the exact same one behind that diesel. So let's go ahead and talk about why the diesel might make sense for you. Now, if you don't plan on ever going off road for hours at a time at low speeds, why wouldn't you get the high output power show? I mean, this engine is only $12,495 over the standard 7.3, and unfortunately, you cannot get the standard output power stroke with a Tremor Super Duty. You only can get the high output or the 7.3 gas. That's it. Now, let's talk about the power. 500 horsepower comes on around 2,600 RPMs. 1,200 pound-feet of torque comes on around 1,600 RPMs. That is insane. And this is truly a performance truck when you get this high output. I don't think that it was really intended for just towing. I think it was for bragging rights and to beat down the GM and Ram guys 100%. Now the 10 speed behind it is the 10R140. This does have a compacted graphite iron block, aluminum heads just like the gas engine over there. And they did decrease compression on this one compared to the standard output. It's like 15.2 to one. Also, the cooling on this engine is pretty insane. You can pretty much see all the lines running through. And it does have a water jacketed turbocharger as well. But again, it's $12,495 more than the gas engine. Let's check out the towing capacity online for the diesel and the gas truck. Now, as far as the towing capacity goes for the diesel, as I mentioned, you have a 355 axle, so you have two gross combined weight ratings. So it's going to be the lower one right here. You can tell by this number three here. And when you go all the way down to the right, you'll see 18.2. That's for conventional towing. Okay. Now, as far as the gas engine goes, 430 rear, in the same scenario, you have a lower gross combined weight rating, and that's going to be 18.2. Now, down below is going to be for gooseneck and fifth wheel so starting off with a high output power stroke 355 you're going to have these numbers so 23,000 for fifth wheel and it's going to be the same for gooseneck 73 with a 430 it's going to have a 28.6 gross combined weight rating and 21,000 for fifth wheel and gooseneck so pretty much the same numbers there and the gas engine isn't that far behind before i show you guys the numbers on the door always know this you're gonna run out of payload before you ever, ever get to that towing capacity that I just showed you. So gross axle weight rating up front's gonna be different, 4,800 pounds. And then the gross axle weight rating in the rear is gonna be the same for both trucks at 7,050. Gross fuel weight rating for the gas 7.3 is gonna be 11,499 pounds. This truck has 4,285 pounds of payload, okay? So this truck weighs on the curb 7,000 214 pounds now this is a lower trim level so you just have to keep that in mind but it does have the center console and it's pretty loaded for an xlt the only difference on the axles is the front at 5600 pounds and that's because you have a heavier engine the gross fuel equipment is going to be 12,000 pounds and then here's your payload 3944 pounds now this truck has 341 pounds less payload than the gas truck. Now, if these were the same, I would venture to say it would probably be about 150 pounds because this truck does have the sunroof, leather seats, it does have a spray and bed liner, so all that stuff's gonna increase the weight. So, I don't know if the gas engine would be worth it if you're looking for payload. And that's kind of in part to Ford trucks. It's different with GM and Ram, they have more payload for sure over the gas engine. So with that being said, I don't know if that would be a deciding factor for me, but this truck weighs 842 pounds more than the gas engine. And base model Ford only has 341 more pounds of payload. Now this truck on the curb is heavy, 8,056 pounds on the curb. So yeah, I think that for most people, the gas engine makes more sense. But if you really truly plan on going off-road or if you do a lot of city driving, I think that the gas engine makes a lot more sense. You guys saw the towing capacities. It has the 430 rear end and it has class leading torque too. So it just depends on what you're looking for and you can save basically $12,495. But 
when it comes down to sheer power and confidence, exhaust brake, and that extra weight that you have on this truck, which does translate to a better towing vehicle, the diesel might make more sense for others. So I hope you guys liked the video. As I said, this truck in carbonized bronze is available. New colors, XLT versus the Lariat. This is a good video for me because I never really get a chance to see this happen often. So when it does, I have to do a video on it. See you guys soon.